I want to use this video to discuss determining discount rates for discounted cash flow and net present value calculations. Let's start off by talking about the criteria that goes into selecting a discount rate. Um, overall, the higher the risk, the higher the discount rate to choose. And this is really very simple. Um, investors, those who give you money or th those who are lending you money, um, will demand a higher, a higher return for a higher risk. Um, and you, if you, you look at venture capitalists, for instance, they typically get returns. They start at about 20 percent. They make a 30, 40, sometimes even 50 percent with a venture capitalist. They're taking a somewhat risky investment, in a lot of cases, very risky investment when they invest with people. Um, contrast that with the bank or something where you might be getting a 1, 2, 3 percent return. Uh, the bank is relatively risk-free. The venture capitalist has, has, made a, has made a very large risk investment, so they demand a different risk discount rate. They demand a different return. The second factor that goes into this um, is the time horizon. Typically, the longer the time horizon, the less certainty there is about that time horizon. You, know, you can predict tomorrow, you can predict next month, which with some reasonable certainty, it gets more difficult as you try to predict next year, as you try to predict 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, 30 years, etc. Um, so there typically is some adjustment to the discount rate for the time horizon. The longer the, the time horizon, the higher the discount rate. And the final factor that goes in is the cost of capital. Um, and this is for businesses. So a business really has two sources of, of capital. It gets money it borrows, um, and it has equity investment. Now, the money it borrows is basically the cost of that money. So if it has to get a loan from the bank, has to get a loan from the bond market, um, the cost of capital is the interest rate or the yield on those loans. Um, it's what investors demand as, as a return for investing in that company's for making a loan to that company. By the same token, the equity is the cost of getting investors to actually invest in a stock or invest directly in your company. What kind of return does the investor want to invest in your company? Um, typically, it, um, it's low. You, you'll see low rates of equity rates, low loan rates if the company is very st very stable and established. Uh, you'll see very high rates if the company is not very if not very established. And across the capital, typically loans and equity have somewhere near the same rate for most companies. It's, it wouldn't be typical to see a company that has a 20% stock yield and a 2% loan rate. You might see them both having 5% rates or 4.5% and 5% rates, something like that. So they tend to be very close. But basically the cost of capital is the average cost of, of getting money for that company to operate either through loans or through equity. This slide shows the yield curve. The yield curve is a graphical representation of the concept we were just talking about, indicating that the higher, that the longer someone invests, the higher return they're looking for. On this uh, particular graph, the, the time horizon is on the x-axis, runs about three months to 30 years. On the x-axis, uh, from about 0% to 4% of the various returns you get for various treasury securities. And as you can see, that if you're investing in a treasury security for three months, you're getting a very, very low return somewhere near zero. If you're investing for 10 years, you're getting something just slightly above 3%. And if you're investing for 30 years, you're getting a return of about 4%. So the concept of higher return for, for a longer time applies not only to corporations, uh, be they startup corporations or existing corporations, but also applies as well to U.S. Treasury securities. This slide is showing us the detail on the treasury rates we just showed on the yield curve. And it shows us the maturity and the yield for various treasury investments. What I wanted to highlight on this slide was the five-year treasury rate. Um, it's about 2.02%, let's say 2% for the sake of argument. What this indicates is that an investor in a treasury would want a 2% return for a five-year investment in a treasury for making a loan to the U.S. Treasury for, for five years. Um, treasury rates are considered risk-free investment. That's what the financial markets consider them. So typically, treasury rates are about as low as you can go. Um, if we look at the next slide, which is corporate borrowing rates, we'll see a variety of rates on this slide as well. The one I wanted to highlight was the five-year range on this as well. Um, by concept, if treasuries are risk-free, corporate borrowing, therefore, is somewhat riskier. Um, and how much riskier depends on the quality of the the quality of the company you're investing in as well as the time horizon. But if we look at a corporate rate here, we have three five-year rates, 2.973, 3%, and 3.47 for round numbers, let's say that they're uh, three to three and a half percent. So what we're seeing is that if I put a risk-free investment for, for five years, 
I'm willing to take 2% from the U.S. Treasury. On average, if I want to invest with a corporation, I'm looking for a return of 3 to 3 to 3.5% for that same investment. So because there's some risk with the company, I'm looking to get a higher return, in this case, one percentage point higher, uh, for investment in that company. But that's the key concept, that the riskier you get, the, the higher return that you're looking for on that investment. This slide is providing us some aggregate corporate bond yield data from the marketplace. Um, if you look at this chart, you'll see there's a variety of different maturities and a variety of different types of investments. The first one here is one to 10 year maturity corporate debt. According to the marketplace, that has a 3.7% yield requirement. That is the cost of capital to borrow for a typical corporation in the one to seven year range is 3.7%. So if you're looking at a discount rate for some sort of some sort of activity that requires the company to borrow money for one to ten years or in this range, the minimum discount rate you should be looking at is 3.7 percent based on the market data. Um, likewise, it has 10 plus year maturity data, which is 6.098 or let's say 6.1 percent. Uh, that's the same indication if you're looking for to borrow for more than 10 years, you should be looking at a discount rate at a minimum of 6.1 percent. Uh, the third line is the corporate master, and the corporate master is sort of an aggregate average number for the market. You can see it's 4.27%. Uh, That's somewhere between the 3.7 and the 6.1. That's the average yield on all corporate borrowings in the market, all investment-grade corporate borrowings in the market. Uh, investment-grade means high-quality borrowings, typical operating, truly operating corporations that are profitable and expected to be, continue to be profitable and have a high probability of paying off their debt. So there... Corporate bond yield is 4.27%, which means, again, if you're one of these companies and you're looking for discount rate, your minimum should probably be something like 4.27%. Now, the interesting category, one of my favorites, is high yield. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with high yield, um, high yield bonds are formerly known as junk bonds, and what they really are is risky bonds. Um, high yield is kind of a great name. If somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'd like you to invest in some risky bonds, you're going to slam the door in your face. If somebody comes and tells you that you're going to invest in some junk bonds, you're probably going to slam the door in your face. If somebody comes to you and says, we're going to invest in some high yield bonds, you're probably interested. So you can see the marketing element of just, just putting a name on this. Um, the, cor the corporate bond yield for high yield bonds is the date I took this selection, 9.98%, uh, let's say roughly 10%. That means if you're a non-investment grade company, and a non-investment grade company means some sort of risky company, it's not, it's got a reasonably high probability that there will be some defaults on their bonds, they won't be able to pay back their debt, you're looking for a yield of 10% almost on that bond. So that forms the basis if you're not an investment grade company, you're not a rated company, you're looking at something like a 10%, a 9.98, 10% discount rate as a minimum on that investment. Now you can see we talked earlier about um, venture capitalists looking for 20% returns. You can start to see that high yield bonds are sort of getting into the venture capital um, area. They're a lot higher than the 3% we saw, the 3 or 4% we saw on the, on the regular corporate bonds. They're higher than the 2% we saw on the treasuries. But they're starting to approach the high risk territory. The last three slides we talked about bond yields and the cost of debt. On this slide, we're talking about stock yields and the cost of equity, the second component of, of the business's cost of capital. And I wanted to bring your focus to some of the areas in the middle of this slide, uh, just pointing at McDonald's and Coca-Cola. Um, it says here the yield, the indicated yield for Coca-Cola is 3.3%, the indicated yield for McDonald's is 3.16%. Um, this is right in line with the 3 to 3.5% 3 we saw earlier on corporate bond yields. If you think about it, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Procter & Gamble, some of the other Johnson & Johnson, some of the other companies in this range are established operating companies. Uh, they're making a profit. There's a high probability that they'll continue to be in business going forward. So hence, the market is indicating a stock yield of about 3%, 3.5%, typical for a high-quality company. Um, if we move up the chart a little bit, and this is the highest we could get off the Dow Jones Industrial Chart, we look at a couple of the top yields yielding companies on this, Verizon and AT&T. Um, I'll stress that these are, that's Verizon, the landline phone company, and AT&T, I guess, is a composite of um, AT&T and the wireless company. Um, the key element there is that they have a higher yield, 
and they typically have a higher yield because there's some sort of risk associated with the business. In the case of the landline phone companies, the risk is actually cell phones. You all turn off your landlines. Um, everybody goes to cell phones. The landlines hence become a lot less profitable. So what we're seeing here is that the market is saying, hey, if I'm going to invest in a reasonably secure business that I, you know, Coca-Cola or McDonald's, where they're going to keep selling the, the soda, or they're going to keep selling the hamburgers day, day in and day out, I'm going to demand one yield. Um, if I'm investing in a company that's sort of in decline, um, they're not landline telephones, are not the future, cell phones are, I'm going to demand a higher yield. Um, so what we're seeing here is the same effect. The riskier the investment, the the higher the yield required. Again, and this is where if a venture capitalist came in and he looked at a company that was not established, he might say something like 20%. If you came in and invested in a company that was a lot less established than Verizon or AT&T, you might be looking at a 15% yield. But that's the concept when you combine. So what happens is when you combine the yield on your stocks or your cost of equity, you combine your yields on your bonds, your cost of borrowing, that becomes your cost of capital, and that really becomes the basis for your discounted cash flow analysis and, and basis for determining your discount rates. Um, so if you see my little smiley face here, we've gone from a frustrated look questioning in the first slide to a very happy smiley face at this point, and I hope everybody who's made it through this video has now some basis in, of determining discount rates and has a smiley face. Thanks.